The era of the white collar jobs is no longer there. I mean, government and the private sector must create an enabling environment for the youth to use their own entrepreneurial skills and create jobs for themselves. They don't have to be held down by their own perceptions about what's possible. And so exposing to young people to the world of possibilities, encouraging them to do whatever it takes to get out of whatever is holding them back from, from being the best that they can be is what inspires me to do my job. This is a big, really a big town. This is an international center. It's a place where very, very many people come to, inv to, to invest. It's not a village for a few Somalis here. If I were to give you a money to start a business, which product do you have started? The fish thing is uh, very new. We did research and just discovering, wow, this is nice and let's try it. People around this area don't know nutritional benefit in the fish. Most of the doctors in Kenya, those who are doing the neurosurgeon, the cardiacs, all of them, have, they say that if a small child starts eating the fish, then even the intelligence will increase. So we wanted to establish that one to improve even that one in our community. The biggest challenges that the community are facing is always that they are complaining that there's not enough milk in the market. And the ones we brought are always going bad due to lack of preservation methods. So we have taken a data before we propose this project. We process them, put them into a packet sell to the community, that's our plan. How we measure the outcomes of the grants would be looking at the activities that the youth themselves have realized. So what's come as a result of their fish farming project or their milk pasteurization project. I think the youth now have very brilliant ideas. Initially there were 58 groups who applied for the community grants and only 20 groups were qualified. I think youth-led development is the crux of development going forward. Young people are, make up the majority of all of our societies around the world, so they need to be at the forefront of it. If not, you're, you're not going to go very far. What motivates me into volunteering? The issues that face us day to day, and they have no solution. It's not something imposed on us, it's something that we ourselves, out of our own problems we have, we came together and maybe established this. The GE Youth has four different components. The Youth Action, it is the one that talks about um, how best to provide leadership skills to young people so that they can be empowered. The other component that we have is our Youth Work. And that's our, the component that focuses predominantly on helping young people transition into livelihoods where they can actually transition into jobs. Through that process, we also try to link them to financing so that they can set up micro-businesses. Our youth education component focuses on how we can strengthen education in the primary and secondary schools. We are providing interactive radio instruction so that young people are able to participate more substantively. They understand what their rights and responsibilities are, cohabitating with people from diverse communities in a very peaceful way. To use this radio program in teaching the class, it is basically interactive. Teacher, one the reporter from a group. This particular radio program talks about child rights. It makes the people to cooperate so it is giving the children that motivation to avoid uh, violence and to resort to dialogue and understanding one another. The main objective of this radio is to train youth to be able to manage the station in the future themselves without adults like me being around. Are you on air? I'm a presenter and also some of field reporter and also administrator. Journalism, you know, when you are taking that step of to be a journalist, you must change the impact or the challenges that your community are facing. You know, I'm kind of a, I'm a person who is somehow social to people. 
I like entertaining people, I like so many jokes, so, and journalism was also my dream since I was young. We are improving their professional capacity, and also if they leave the station, they can be able to get jobs elsewhere and work as journalists. I produced seven programs. The first one was uh, Girl Child Education, and my second program was uh, Effect of Early Marriage. You know, in culture of uh, Somali, they like to marry their daughters off while they are age of 14 to 16 without the consent of that girl. So this day I went for a meeting, a youth meeting. Then we were supposed to come up with a committee that will coordinate the activities of the group. So uh, somebody suggested we should have a gender sensitive group. At that time we were only five girls and around 90 boys. Some guys stood up and said, no, we don't need ladies, you know, why should we have them here? So it was so humiliating. For me, it was just out from school and I was ready to come and put into my society. I was just heartbroken in a way, yeah. But I didn't really just take that very seriously, yeah. I said, I know what I'm going for and I'll go for it. Because it's complex, it's not something um, that's changed overnight. It's really based on changing attitudes among young people as well as their parents and community elders because the norms that are set in place for, for what families want their young people to pursue in terms of livelihoods and um, careers. You not only have to change those attitudes and the norms in the society, but then along with it, you may need to adjust um, education systems. The issue of uh, manual labor or certain types of service jobs for young people is an issue in most of the countries in which EDC works. In the Middle East, it's referred to as the culture of shame. You know, to some extent, we see it everywhere. Uh, it's a very, very complex issue. It's true that we have a negative attitude as young people towards manual labor in Garissa. We've been brought up in a pastoralist situation where we've been taught only to herd goats, camel, cows. So that is the only basic labor we know. So I think that's an alternative livelihood which needs a mind shift and also a shift of attitude. We're trying to really link them to mentors, people who are good, going to be role models for them. Because I don't think they realize that some of the people that they admire the most in the society started with jobs that were seemingly menial. We're expecting and hoping that it'll inspire young people to think outside of the box, which for them is NGO ICT, and start doing something that might be a little bit more sweat intensive. I think the youth of Garissa must come out of their cultural cocoons. They must come out of the community stereotype jobs. They must go out to the market and be ready to do any job that is available. Basically, I've lived a bit distant from my, from my parents who live in a village outside Garissa. For the people at home, they look at material value, what they want to achieve for the children, or what more material value, what business value, what economic value of everything in life. And me, I look at academic value. What can I add, what experience, what information, what knowledge, what new thing am I learning every day that can make my life better.